Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R720 XD server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R720 XD server. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop into this. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to cover uh, the different types of drives that are compatible with uh, your XD server. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, different max capacities, the different speeds for those types of drives. Uh, we're going to physically uh, install uh, some of the drives. We're going to uh, do uh, Dell Diagnostics at the end to show you how to properly test your drives. And then we're going to use a tool that I personally like called HD Sentinel that will let you see uh, the power on hours and health score um, and just a secondary test that you can do two different ways uh, to make sure that you have good drives, uh, especially if you're buying used drives. Um, at least this can also verify to make sure that you got new drives with whoever you're working with, right? So, all right, well, let's hop into the, uh, the different types of drives. So you have SAS, you have SATA, and you have solid state drives. Those are going to be your three types of drives for the R720 XT server. Uh, so the different speeds for those types. So for SAS, you can get 10K or 15K RPMs. With SATA, you can get 7.2K RPM. And I will note there's some other uh, kind of weird ones out there where you can get like 10K with like the Velociraptors. Uh, you can get... Um, uh, like uh, there's some weird ones like 5.9k. There's some you know kind of offshoots for SATA, but really the heart of SATA is uh, 7.2k. That's what you're going to get um, with uh, solid state drives. You can get uh, six gigabit per second. So that's going to be um, what you're going to get on the speed side. So now let's talk about the max capacity that you can get. And that depends on which uh, chassis you have, essentially. So uh, you're going to have your 24 bay, which is a small form factor chassis, the 2.5 inch. And you're going to have the 12 bay, which is the uh, large form factor, 3.5 inch. And we'll cover that in more depth in the different uh, chassis video. Uh, but for this sake, it's important to note uh, just for the types of drives that you buy, because the capacities are uh, very, very different. Okay, So with uh, the small form factor uh, drives, for uh, the SAS, the max that you can get is 2.4 terabytes. With SATA, it's 2 terabytes. And with uh, solid state drives, it's 7.68 terabytes. So that's the max that you can get on the small form factor side. With large form factor, um, we'll talk about what Dell says and what we've played with and uh, go over that for the max, right? So Dell is going to tell you the max is 12 uh, for SAS, uh, 12 for SATA and 7.68 for solid state drives. Uh, we've played around a little bit um, and we've gotten 16, 14, and 7.68 terabytes. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if someone drops a comment and says, hey, we've put in an 18 or we put in higher. I'd love to hear it actually. So if you have, uh, you know, put that out there for the rest of the users so everyone knows. Um, so all right, so those are the different uh, speeds. Those are the different types, the different maxes. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually uh, physically install a couple drives real quick, which is honestly super easy because they're hot swap, which means, yes, you can uh, take them out while the machine is on, while it's live, um, and they slide in and out. But we're going to show you nonetheless. Um, and then we're going to show you how to do um, Dell Diag and how to do um, HD Sentinel. Let's get going. All right, so one thing I did want to recommend is, uh, I'm, if you notice wearing ESD gear, I think it's always the best uh, to wear when you are inside or working on your machine at all, so I just wanted to note that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and push the button. The latch will pop open, or the, um, the tray, the caddy, however you want to call it. You're just going to slide this out. Your drive will come out. It's uh, honestly very nice and simple. Um, and then we're going to put in our new drive, okay? So open it up. Slide it in, close it. I mean, honestly, again, it's very, very simple. One of the easiest upgrades you're going to see in uh, all, this whole series that we do. But again, I'll do it one more time just to show you how easy it really is. It just slides right in, fits perfectly, just clicks right in. It's easy. Uh, the other thing I did want to note is uh, some people might be like, hey, how do I put solid state drives in this? This is a 3.5 inch machine. So you would get uh, an adapter. So this is a 
3.5 inch to 2.5 inch tray adapter where you put this piece in to just a normal tray um, but this piece will fit in and then you can now put in a 2.5 inch drive uh, and then you can install your solid state drives. So one other thing I did want to note that some people might be interested in this video is the fact that the XD has uh, two small form factors in the rear. So we're going to actually show you the rear kit uh, before we hop into doing uh, Dell Diag and HD Sentinel. All right, so I wanted to highlight the rear kit since this is one of the uh, extra features of the XD compared to, like, let's say, the R720 or the R620, uh, is that you can put two small form factor in the back. Uh, you do need to have the special four-piece cable over here, um, but as a whole, this is a great kit to add. If you need the upgrade, we have it, so you can contact our sales team for it. Uh, but this is something I definitely wanted to highlight um, so that you could, um, you know, you would know that, yes, there are, say, 24 in the front for the small form factor and 12 for the large form factor. But you can also put uh, two SSDs in the back, for instance, if you wanted. Uh, you can put two. Uh, these are actually uh, 900 gig 15K SAS drives, um, which are kind of uh, rare, actually. Uh, but we, we use those sometimes. Um, so it just depends on what a customer wants. But anyhow, so uh, this is a great feature. So now we'll hop into uh, Dell Diagnostics and then show you HD. Sentinel. Let's get going. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives, it'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you wanna go ahead and do is boot up your server, and during post, you wanna go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you wanna to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side, and then you want to press Run Hardware Diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press Yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Di Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. Or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC. But you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just 
go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning, but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has you know, been in use and especially if you want to use this for a big enterprise system you don't want to be using drives that have been you know heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure um, and that's one of the reasons why hd sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%, so all pretty good. When it comes to this drive's power on time, it has over 2,000 days. So this is probably something we would not use, as it is, you know, has a couple years of use. But you know, that's the beauty of this tool. You can you can see this type of information, and then you can decide on whether this is a drive that you want to use in your data center, um, in a enterprise system. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.